Hi, my name is Kathy, and I have a story. Um, I'm going to tell you about being homeless and having a mental illness. Um, in 2000, I came down with um, a mental illness. Before that, I was working as a life job coach for um, people with developmental disabilities, and I was doing really well. I um, had a mental breakdown, I lost my job, I lost my um, work, I, I lost my living place, I lost the family I was a nanny for, and basically my life was bleak and dumb and I had nothing to um, really live for. Uh, I um, tried to end my life at that time because I thought there was nothing worth living for. I thought life was done with. And then I was in, I was in and out of the hospital and uh, they said I had a choice of either going to the state hospital or coming to live with my mom back in San Jose. Mom, who wants to live with her mother? How um, horrible that would be, but it was a choice of that or the hospital. I was already homeless and in a homeless shelter and living in my car in the streets and I just really wasn't doing well. So I went back and I bit the billet and I came back to live with mom and it was really hard. It, it, it worked for about six months, but um, it helped me get, to get my feet back on my feet some. And I went back to school thinking I would get in my dream of doing art therapy and um, having a, um, becoming an art therapist and helping people with mental illnesses. So I went back to school and I had a breakdown. I couldn't be at school and deal with my mental illness and deal with the stress of everything. So once again, I um, couldn't go to school and I dropped out of school and then um, I decided that I would um, start working again. Um, I went to NAMI, an, an organization for people with mental illnesses, and I started being a peer mentor there. And I started to um, go on the Braveheart team and be the leader, and we raised over $10,000 for NAMI, and it was wonderful. But my mental illness kept getting in the way of me having this life that I kept li wanting to live for. And um, I got offered a job as a peer mentor with the county, and I was doing pretty well. I was just working 10 hours a week, and I was living in a studio apartment. I had gotten my own studio apartment. And um, I progressed in my job to 20 hours a week. And um, I got a scholarship to go back to school and, and once again pursue a job of being an art therapist. And um, I went back to school. I um, left my studio so I could live in another place. And once again, my illness kind of, it was too much work for me and I got frustrated and really anxious. And um, I lost the house I was living in and I had to drop out of school and I was living out of my car. And once again, I felt my dreams had kind of crumbled. Um, about this time, I developed a relationship with God and realized that there must have been some reason for the patterns I kept going through. And I realized that what mattered most, more than going to school and being this perfect art therapist and having this job, um, was that maybe there was something more to that. Maybe that each one of us had a spirit in a heart, a dream, a passion, a goal that God had put in my heart to use my art and my speaking to help other people to find their dreams and their hopes. And um, when I lost my, my going to school, it kind of meant my life was shattering again. 
I couldn't hold my job as a peer mentor that I was doing very well in. And my voices were starting to become louder and louder. And um, I couldn't live with the voices in my head. They were taking over my life. And I killed myself. I, um, I overdosed on um, Seroquel and I overdosed on Oxycontin. Uh, took the Oxycontin in the emergency room. Luckily, they were able to um, induce a coma and um, put me on some breathing machines. And when I woke up a while later, it was a couple days, um, I said that I would no longer live unless I could be happy. And if God really wanted me in this world, I would have to find a purpose and a dream. I was put into a um, locked facility for six months, and in that locked facility, I had more time to figure out what my goal was to develop more of a relationship with Christ, to figure out what I wanted to do, not what I wanted to be with for other people. And it was here that I realized that I really loved art and I really loved cooking and we had cooking classes and um, I would continue to go to my box, I called it my um, toolbox. It had all my um, stress relief and my self-help things in it and I developed this toolbox that I'd take with me to help me out that had lotions in it, it had a stress ball in it, it had a letter from someone. And I learned that with these things that I could start developing a life. I met Downtown Street Team right when I got out of the locked facility and I started working on a farm and I became a lead on the farm and the farm gave me dignity, it gave me a respect and it gave me a life. Not only that, at the meetings, everybody see, is happy, and I said I wanted to be a part of this family, and I am a part of this family, and I really care about these people, and you will too care about these people as you become part of the group. Um, I'm now going to develop some, some groups on how to make your own stress bag and make your own toolbox of stressful things of how to reduce the stress and activities you can do when you're depressed and I have a scrapbook that I make and it shows my happy memories in it and I hope to share many more happy memories and to teach you how you too can not teach but show you how you can find your hope, your passion in life and Downtown Street Team along with a lot of other facilities, um, have given me that hope to share my life again.